It's time for a little meat education, okay? This is all about the fatty acid profile of meats. Not all meats are created equal, okay? Now, we know that grass-fed, grass-finished is better, yada, yada, we know that. Okay, but I'm talking about a little bit further. I'm talking about inherently the given fatty acid profile of a specific meat, like beef versus chicken versus bison versus pork. Like, which animal has the best fatty acid profile? And what I mean by that is the best kinds of saturated fats, the polyunsaturated fats, the steric acids, and things like that. So by the end of this, you'll have a good idea of which fats are high quality when it comes to animal sources of them and which ones are not so high quality. Now, I will say at the beginning of this video that if you're getting good quality meat through and through, like all of these are good, okay? And there's others we could list, right? Mutton, lamb, all that stuff. But we're not gonna go into that. I'm gonna keep it basic. All of these are good if you get good quality sources. I just wanna help you determine what's gonna be best, especially if you're following a low carb, high fat protocol where a lot of your energy source is coming from fats in the first place. It's just good to have a little bit of basic meat knowledge, all right? So we got new videos coming out multiple times per week, almost every single day these days. So make sure you're keeping it locked in here at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time almost all the time. Now, additionally, hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. That way you just know whenever I do post a video, especially if it comes out at a different time of day for any reason. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go through the breakdown of fats with each of these. Today I've got beef, chicken, bison, and pork. And I'm happy to do a further breakdown of other meats if you just wanna let me know in the comment section, but today we're just dealing with these four, okay? So first off, we've got beef. Now this is taking traditional grain-fed beef. Grass-fed beef is going to be markedly better, and I'll explain it, okay? So 100 gram serving of beef, we have 255 calories, Okay, we have about 20 grams of total fat. Okay, so the fat is decent, right? 7.7 .7 grams of which is saturated fat. Again, we want saturated fat. Okay, saturated fat coming from an animal source is good for us, especially if we're in keto as far as myelination goes, as far as our overall nerve health goes, as far as our brain goes, and as far as actually preventing atherosclerosis from occurring because a lot of times it actually creates specific compounds within the blood that actually stave off some of the inflammation there. I'll explain that later. Okay, 8.8 .8 grams of monounsaturated fat. Monounsaturated fat is a fat that only has one bond that is not totally bound by hydrogen, has one spot that isn't bound by hydrogen. Ultimately, what that means is it's a liquid fat, it's not saturated, but it's very, very stable. Because it only has one unsaturated area, it only has one area in which it can become oxidized. Whereas with polyunsaturated, for example, you have multiple open bonds. So all that means is when you compare a monounsaturated with a polyunsaturated, polyunsaturated are very fragile. They go rancid easily, they go toxic easy through what's called lipid peroxidation, but they also are just unstable, like they break down when they cook. So you want a lower level of polyunsaturated and you want a higher level of monounsaturated. Now, whole different world if we're talking about fish, okay? So just disregard that. Now, so we've got 8.8 .8 monounsaturated. So we've got really good levels of good quality oils and only 0.5 grams of polyunsaturated. So only a, a small amount of the lower quality oil. It's still decent for you. Now what's interesting here, with a grain fed, you're looking at a nine to one ratio of omega six to three. Very high omega six to omega three ratio. Not that great, okay? So when a cow is grain fed, you run into this problem. Now grass fed, you're looking significantly better. You're looking like a two to one ratio, sometimes a three to one. So way better. Omega-3 anti-inflammatory. Omega-3 builds a phospholipid bilayer, does not store as fat as easy. Omega-6s store as fat a lot easier, but they also trigger inflammation, okay? We have to be very careful with that. So be careful with the quality meat. A little grain fed meat isn't gonna kill you, but you know I'm a broken record when it comes to my grass fed, grass finished meat, always. Okay, now let's look at what is actually in this meat. Okay, we've got steric acid, oleic acid, and palmitic acid, which I'll break down in a minute. Okay, we'll go over to the other side of the board and I'll explain those. But now let's look at chicken. Chicken is a lower fatty acid profile quality, okay? So we, you have to look at what the animal ate, okay? And you have to look at the amount of fat you're getting out of that animal. If a chicken is eating a lot of soy meal, if it's eating a lot of just garbage, that's gonna come through in the fat. Now, if you were to consume, say, chicken thigh to try to get a little bit more fat out of your chicken, you're getting a mix of different fats, okay? You're getting all kinds of different fats that you can't really control. I don't recommend getting your fats from chicken sources. If you're going to eat animal fat, okay, please listen carefully for beginners or people that are experienced. If you're eating higher fat cuts of meat, get your higher fat cuts of meat from beef and from pork. 
don't get them from chicken. Do not rely on chicken fat because it is much less quality, much more antibiotics, much more hormones, okay? Now, let's look at the macros here in terms of the fat. Uh, we've got 8.1 grams of total fat. We got 2.3 of which are saturated fat. We've got 3.6 that are monounsaturated, still a decent amount, but 1.5 poly. So that means it's a very unstable fat. You don't want to cook with chicken fat a whole lot because it still has enough polyunsaturated that go bad. Okay, that's not a huge number, but look at the ratio here. Monounsaturated versus polyunsaturated. Eight versus 0 0.5. Okay, 3.6 versus 1.5. You have almost half the amount of monounsaturated fats coming in as polys. Omega-6 to 3 ratio, 13 to 1. Not a good ratio. Even good quality chicken, like if you get good pasture chicken, if you get good cage-free chicken, that can get down to like a 6.1. Okay, much better. Again, chicken is all about getting the lean ones so you don't get the fatty acid profile. Chicken breast whenever you can. Uh, linoleic acid and low amounts of stearic acid still from a little bit of the saturated fats there, okay? So very, very important with beef and chicken to know that. Uh, I'm going to scoot on over and talk about bison and pork, but before I do, really quick, just in case you guys don't know and you haven't watched my other videos before, uh, Butcher Box is a really cool way to get beef and chicken and actually pork too. So grass-fed, grass-finished, good quality stuff. So they're not only a big sponsor of this channel, but this is a perfect video to talk about them for a little bit, so I'll just take a second. If you actually get grass-fed, grass-finished meat from the grocery store, you're going to spend a lot more money than you would with Butcher Box. So it's a way to get grass-fed, grass-finished meat to your doorstep cheaper than the grocery store, but also because you're watching my channel, there's a special link down below that gets you a discount, also gets you some free gifts and stuff like that. So after this video, if you wanna check out some good quality meat, you're gonna eat it anyway, might as well check it out and get it cheaper, so down below in the description. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's talk about bison for a second. Bison is my jam, okay? If I am forced to buy store-fed meat, that sounds bad, right? Like, I have some benefits because I use ButcherBox a lot, but like, if I am forced to buy store-bought meat, like if I'm traveling, I go for bison, okay? Because bison has some FDA requirements on it that require it to be grass-fed, grass-finished. Has to be raised on grass all the time. So let's look at the profile here. 145 calories, 7.2 grams of total fat, significantly leaner for a red meat, okay? 2.9 grams of which is saturated, actually pretty low. Compare that to beef, 20 grams, 7.2, 7.7 versus 2.9. Uh, the monounsaturateds are low, but that's just because the total fat content is low. 2.8 grams to 8.8. 0 0.3 grams polyunsaturated. Not a bad ratio. Beef actually has a decent ratio of mono to poly, but bison, I mean, that's a practically undetectable amount of polyunsaturated fats. Uh, natural omega-3 ratio, 6 to 1. Omega-6 to 3, naturally. Okay, now there's some other ways that you can stretch that a little bit more depending on how they're raised, what they're fed. Sometimes they can be given grass pellets, which can alter that, which is unfortunate. Uh, high levels of steric acid and a linolenic acid. Okay, linolenic acid is a little bit different from linoleic. Not super important to talk about right now, but very good profile here. So, so far, beef, bison, good to go. Chicken, keep it lean. Pork. Okay, so the thing about pork is pork has a very terrible six to three ratio. Not a good omega-3 to omega-6 ratio at all. Uh, we're looking at a high level of omega-6 generally because most pork is fed lots of soy and lots of garbage. So it's very important you're getting high quality pork. Very, very, very important. Um, so let's look at the macros here with the fats. 260 calories and 100 grams. So it's the most calorically dense. Uh, 21 grams of total fat, 7.9 saturated fat, 9.4 mono, 1.9 poly, so pretty high in the poly and saturated fats. Not terrible, but again, if you're going to be getting a better quality pork, you're in better shape. High oleic acid, which is what we'll talk about in a second. Oleic acid is awesome, really good stuff, and high in palmitic acid. So my rule of thumb with pork is if you go for like bacon, bacon is gonna have a different ratio of this. Bacon is predominantly saturated fat. It's like 50% saturated fat and like 40% oleic. So really good monounsaturated fats and really good saturated fats without all the polys. So bacon, pork belly, stuff like that in the way of pork, hands down the best. Otherwise, try to go lean. Unless you can get some good quality like pork sausage that's from a good organic farm, that's gonna have a better ratio, okay? So just to recap again, so everyone's following. Beef, grass-fed, grass-finished, you're good to go. Chicken, keep it lean. Bison, try to get one that is not fed any grass-fed pellets. Pork. Fatty cuts, uh, pork belly, bacon, otherwise lean, okay? Now let's talk real quick about oleic acid. It's a monounsaturated fat that contributes dramatically to myelination, so it helps your nerves a whole lot. 
it increases fatty acid oxidizing genes. So it turns the genes on that allow you to burn more fat. Very important. It does this via activation of the CERT1, uh, CERT1 and somewhat CERT3 genes, which turn on cyclic adenosine monophosphate, activate a lot more fat burning. Uh, has powerful appetite suppressing capabilities simply through what's called oleolethanolamide. So this is a mouthful to say, but it's a very powerful appetite suppressing and it works at the cellular level. Then we have alpha linoleic acid. Okay, so like for example, we have chicken has linoleic acid. Alpha linoleic acid is sort of uh, one step above that, which is the omega-3s that you'll typically get from plant sources. So if you eat chicken that's been eating a ton of soy, you'll have alpha, uh, excuse me, you'll have alpha linoleic acid, which is gonna have omega-3s in it, but it has to get converted into a usable form, which less than 1% does, right? So it's really difficult to use any omega-3s that are coming from white meat. Um, broken down the linoleic acid. I'm not gonna spend a lot of detail there. Conjugated linoleic acid. Any ruminants, so like pastured ruminants, so cows, uh, sheep, bison, anything that's on a pasture eating grass is going to have high amounts of conjugated linoleic acid, which is a polyunsaturated fat. It is fragile, but it is a form of trans fat technically that is very good for you. Okay, it has cis and trans bonds, but it impairs lipid storage, meaning it makes it so fats don't store very easily by activating uncoupling protein two. So it does, what it does in the body, uncoupling protein two makes it so that the cells sort of reject excess fat. It's a really cool thing. So we want this conjugated linoleic acid. There's a lot of studies that show that just adding little bits of CLA make a big difference in overall fat metabolism and fat loss. CLA coming from an animal source is not the same as CLA coming from a supplement. Okay, that is a different artificial form. Uh, so again, coming from pastured ruminants, steric acid is a saturated fat you're gonna get in beef. Okay, it prevents mitochondrial fragmentation. So it makes it so the mitochondrial stays in place uh, through activation of what's called the J and K pathway. That J and K pathway makes it so that the saturated fat can do a job and doesn't end up fragmenting the mitochondria. If you don't have amounts of steric acid, the mitochondria becomes fragmented. And what that means is that it cannot create energy. We create energy within the mitochondria. So if it is decrepit because we don't have the right kind of steric acid, it's not going to work and we can't create energy. And we also burn fat, beta oxidation, in the mitochondria. So we need it healthy. Okay, again, steric acid coming from the beef, steric acid coming from the bison, usually looking at the red meats there. So, I'm a big fan of eating leaner cuts of meat whenever possible and just trying to get, you know, modest amounts of fats coming from meats, but I know that that's me and lots of people like to eat fatty cuts. So it just helps you understand that if you're gonna eat a fatty cut, eat a fattier cut of beef, not the chicken thigh. Pork, get the bacon or the pork belly. Bison, it's gonna be lean no matter what. Uh, if you wanna see a further breakdown, let me know down in the comments. And please guys, just make sure you do check out ButcherBox. They have a pretty cool lineup of different meats and different cuts and all that stuff, so it's cool to check out. And keep it locked in here on my channel. See you in the next video.